In today's video, we're building a taller vacuum chamber so we can do some experiments with dropping stuff in zero atmosphere. Nate, you went shopping. Yes. And you found a very large piece of acrylic tubing. I did. It's six <laughs> inches in diameter and about three feet long. We, over the years, have done a lot of cool experiments with vacuum chambers. We've had some very cool results and some stuff that looked amazing. But there have been some experiments we haven't really been able to try because our vacuum chamber was only mm, 12 inches tall. This should make a much taller vacuum chamber and let us show off some of the effects of a vacuum in a much cooler way. Here's the basic idea. We've got a tall clear tube and we're going to turn this into a vacuum chamber so we can experiment what it would be like to drop things in space, but with gravity. So you were telling me that this is something that kind of baffled scientists for years and was finally able to be proven on the moon of all places. That's right, it was theorized for a while that in a vacuum, really lightweight things would still fall the same speed as their denser counterparts, taking, say, a feather and comparing it to dropping a hammer. On Earth, of course, they're gonna fall at vastly different speeds. Uh, Galileo's tests notwithstanding, um, although gravity does pull on everything at the same rate, a feather is so spread out and so lightweight for its size, it's not dense, so it catches air and the air resistance slows it down a lot and so that's why a feather will drop very slowly compared to something the same weight like a, a coin that will drop much faster. But let's say we remove air resistance. If there is no air resistance, then that feather should plummet just the same way that a coin or a ball bearing or a rock will fall. Uh, and this was finally able to be proved on the surface of the moon. Someone took a feather and a hammer and then they just dropped them both at the same time. It was on the moon, so there was only Slower. one sixth of Earth's gravity, <laughs> exactly. And so we want to try recreating a little bit of that. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have the budget to go to the moon, but we do have the budget to make a taller vacuum chamber. So that is what we're doing today. So this is going to be our chamber. It's about 1 8 inch of walls. With our standard vacuum chamber, we used a glass jar from Walmart and using Proto Putty, we made a seal that let our lid fit on there. This does not have a bottom to it. It's a tube that goes all the way through. And so what we need to do is make a Proto Putty seal for both the top and the bottom. Yep. We've got a couple of plates here, a very thick acrylic. This is the same stuff we used to make our lids before. Um, and then I rings. also went ahead and made these rings. It turns out, that one eighth inch acrylic is not quite strong enough with a three foot tube <laughs> to withstand the negative pressure of a vacuum uh, at our altitude. That's 14 or 15 PSI externally pressing in on all sides of this. And while it held up for a while, once it really started pulling most of the air out, it was too much pressure and started sort of collapsing on itself. So I've got three rings that just fit nicely into our acrylic tube. And those are just going to be used as supports. We'll have one near the top, one near the bottom, one near the middle. Uh, and hopefully that will just keep everything from collapsing. We'll just have those probably lightly glued in place. They really don't move very much. And that's just how we like it. So let's mix up a couple of batches of Proto Putty and then we can make the cap and the foot. All right, after you've got your silicone one, we add food coloring. Food coloring is a necessary step, not because it has to have color, but because it has to have water. This stuff cures with moisture. Food coloring is mostly water. So we're gonna add in this much, we're probably gonna try and get about a teaspoon of coloring into it. It is variable how much you put in. It doesn't take much to get it to cure, but with more of it, it cures faster, and we kinda want it to cure a little faster, so we're going for a good amount of color here. And to be clear, it doesn't necessarily have to be food coloring. You nope. could use water. You can. It's harder to tell when it's fully mixed with water, and it just doesn't look as fun. It's just white, which if you want white, then have at it. No food coloring, just water. All right, now I'm just gonna start stirring this in. Time to start adding cornstarch. Let's go with the one that we already had open. Yeah, you got hit with that, didn't you? <laughs> Stuff puts off acetic acid. It's like vinegar. It's very intense, not terribly pleasant. I highly recommend somewhere with good circulation. I prefer to do this in a cup with a good stir stick. This cup could be a little bit sturdier. It's kind of hard to hold on to while I'm stirring sometimes, but I find this is the easiest, least messy way. But be aware, this is a messy process. It's guaranteed gonna make a mess. You can't really avoid that very well. Just be ready to clean up afterward. 
basically your goal is to just keep adding cornstarch more and more until it stops being sticky, or at least until it almost stops being sticky. So as I'm stirring, two things are happening. One, the cornstarch is getting mixed in, and that's gonna make it less sticky, but also it is starting to cure. The food coloring is mixed into the silicone and it is beginning the curing process, and as it does that, it becomes a little bit more rigid and a little bit less sticky as well. And so you're kinda gonna get to a point where it stops sticking as much. Uh, we do want a nice smooth mix, and I'm gonna try and do that with the knife, but I often end up just having to use my hands anyway, which is why I wear gloves when I do this, because, like I said, very messy process, but I like to at least get it somewhat stirred in before I move on to doing it with my hands, otherwise it just sticks immediately and massively, and you can't even mix it up anymore. It's basically like if you were gonna really, really, really be mean to some bread dough that you are making. Lightly squeeze it on everywhere. Uh, we want plenty on top of the ridge because when we put the lid on, it is going to squish it, and we don't want to squish it all the way down and like cut through the proto putty. Okay, press this on and make sure that it smashes it down everywhere because we want it to be flat in contact with the acrylic. Actually, bring it up a little bit on the sides too to give a bigger surface area. And this sets pretty fast, doesn't it? Yeah, usually. It depends on how much liquid you put in. With the amount I put in, I suspect this should go fairly quickly. We maybe want to wait four or five minutes before we start the next batch. This is going to be the lid, and we do want to be able to fit our vacuum gauge onto here as well as the, the point where it pulls the air out. So we need to add a hole and threads that will allow our vacuum pump attachments to connect to it. This is a, a kit that's one quarter inch, 18 NPT. That's referring to the size and thread count of the tap here. Our proto putty is cured. Yep. Uh, so now we can just break the seal here and go for it. There you go. Got it. It's a good sign. There was a good contact yes. with all the proto putty going around. Perfectly smooth. Oh, and it still smells like proto putty. That's going to be there for days. Yeah. All right. <laughs> So now we need to take the rings, and you probably can't fit it in with the proto putty still on there. You gotta pop that off. I have one ring down here near okay. the middle. And honestly, I think even just a couple of tiny pieces of tape are gonna hold these. Or would you prefer to glue them? Uh, I like tape just in case we need to take them out later, and I think you're right. It doesn't take much. Just a couple little strips is gonna hold it in place. They, they're almost held in place just from the fit. But we don't want that chance of something wiggling even a little bit when we're trying to get a vacuum going. Not yet, it doesn't. You got it. Yeah! Good. All right, pulling low pressure. That is a very lovely vacuum tower we've got. <laughs> we were testing the feather versus the penny before. I'm just gonna try using the magnet instead of the penny, like magnet and a penny, it's too complicated this way. I can just lift straight up. I don't have to try and twist it, spin it, anything so fancy. I can just lift and it should drop straight down. Let's give that a shot. Go for it. One, two, three. Beautiful. Still <laughs> hit the side, but you know, what are you gonna do? This is gonna be one of those things that I'm gonna see it. I'm going to watch it happen in front of my own eyes and I'm not gonna believe it. I'm very excited. Now I should point out that the vacuum pump we're using is not perfect. We're not going to get a 100% vacuum. There will be some amount of air still in our vacuum tower. However, it's a pretty good vacuum. It's very, very low pressure with very little air in there. So I'm pretty confident that we'll get at least a decent result, if not a perfect result. Three, two, one. like a brick. Oh, oh my great. goodness. It didn't even move. Thunk, just <laughs> dropped. Oh my gosh, that was so cool. Here we've got some cornstarch on a plastic lid, and there is a reason we're testing this. I was reading a book called Artemis about a station of people who live on the moon, and there was a description about how something sort of exploded or impacted with moon dust, 
and it, you know, dust got thrown up into the air, but then it talked about how that dust went into the air and then settled away. And it had never occurred to me that a dust cloud wouldn't stay on the moon. It just dissipates because even though there's low gravity, there's also no air on the surface. So even dust is going to quickly, relatively quickly fall down to the ground at one sixth the acceleration it would on Earth, but still longer than if you have air resistance holding it up. So I wanted to see if we could recreate something like that. We don't have any moon dust, unfortunately. Instead, we've got cornstarch, which makes a pretty good dust cloud, and we've got it on top of a plastic lid to give a little bit of bounce. And the idea is we just wanna get that dust to fly up into the air. And we're gonna do a test here on the table, and then we're gonna try the same thing in our vacuum tower to see what the result is. Something falling down, impacting our dust, tossing it up in the air and see if it will settle back down quickly or if it looks the same. Got this little uh, magnetic ball bearing sort of thing. We're just gonna drop it down onto our lid and see what the dust cloud looks like. Three, two, one. And we got a big poof. Went up in the air and it did settle. It didn't take forever to settle, but we wanna see if there's a difference in the result inside our vacuum tower to simulate being on the moon. Checking the slow motion footage though, it does seem like we had a lot more particles just staying and hanging in the air. And that was even so, our, our magnet actually hit this ring on the way down, so it didn't have quite the same force, but even with the lesser force, it seems to have made more of a dust cloud. Three, two, one. <laughs> oh, that's the cloud. <laughs> That's what doesn't happen in a vacuum. That was fantastic. That was, that was a cloud up to like here. That just, I'm not sure how, I wonder how much is gonna be visible on the slow motion, but in real life, there is definitely a difference. Well, Mark's got it on a cam too. You can just see the poof, like, and it's still. Puff of dust that oh just boy. slowed, slowly fell back down versus a, like a, you, you said droplets. it. Yeah, you said yeah. it looked more like water. And I think you're right. It just, it behaved a lot more like water as it flew through the air, which I guess there could even be their effect of air resistance when it's going up in the first place. If there is none, then it's just gonna stick together kind of. And if there is air resistance, then it's gonna like Scatter. hit it and push apart a little bit. So it could be yeah, the behavior of dust in a vacuum. That could be probably write a whole PhD thesis on that. There you go guys, summer project. Guys, we've got a vacuum tower. It's super cool to play with and it simulates the lack of atmosphere of outer space and it's tall so we can drop more things in it. If you've got ideas or things you'd like to see us put in it, let us know down in the comments. As always, we've always got more for you to see. Click that box up at the top and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.